Well, I hope you're having a very happy Sunday. Um, over the last two weeks, we finished the George Muller story, um, but I'm just going to mention him again uh, while we do this little slot for flame now. Um, everything that happened in George Muller's life uh, happened because something was going on on the inside. It was going on in here, wasn't it? Inside his heart. He wasn't just a man who did a whole load of good things. He did the things he did because something good was happening here. And there's an incredible story um, that Jesus tells uh, that is all about this um, because it's all about our hearts. And it's a story that I think is so important um, that we do this story every year in Flame. And so we thought we'd do it online through July over the next four weeks. Uh, this amazing story that Jesus told, a very, very important story. And the Bible tells us that at the time he told this story, he was preaching um, on the shores of Lake Galilee, this beautiful lake in Israel. Um, and his, he'd, he was becoming famous um, and great power was pouring out of him at that time. And many people were being healed. Um, and huge crowds were beginning to gather. And in the weeks running up to when he tells this story, the Bible teaches us that crowds of people were coming in, not just from within Israel itself, but they were coming to Galilee from beyond the borders of Israel. They were coming from Lebanon. They were coming from Jordan. They were coming from this Negev desert area down in southern Israel. And, and also large crowds, particularly of Pharisees and priests, were coming from Jerusalem. And the crowds became so great around the shore of Lake, of Lake Galilee at that time that um, Jesus said to the disciples, you've got to get a boat ready because the day's going to come when I'm going to need to stand in a boat and I'll have to teach the people from the sea or everybody's going to be crushed by this crowd. Um, and also at that time, so much was happening and there was such power being displayed through Jesus that it said that the disciples and Jesus hardly had time to eat at that time. And even Jesus's family thought they might come and just take Jesus and force him to come home with them because they were so concerned about this huge, um, these huge numbers, these multitudes of people that were gathering. And then the day came when Jesus said, you've got to get the boat. The crowd was so great. So they got the fishing boat and he got into the boat and he began to teach the people, these huge crowds from the boat. Um, and the very first word he said um, as he stood there was, listen, I need you to listen. Um, and then he opened his mouth and he told this story and he said a farmer, a sower, went out to sow his seed and he scattered his seed out because he's looking for a harvest and the seed fell onto four types of ground. The first ground that it fell onto, you can see it in the picture, we've got the four types of ground here. The first one was hard ground, it fell onto the path. There was no soil here. It was too hard. The, the seeds couldn't get in anywhere. And so the birds came down and the people trampled it. Um, and there was no, no little seedlings, no harvest there. And then the second ground was full of rocks and stones and there was a little soil. So some of the seeds fell and they grew up into these little seedlings. Um, and then it said that the sun beat down on them and the little seedlings just shriveled up and they, and they died. Uh, they couldn't grow into a harvest. And then the next lot of seed fell onto the onto ground that was good, where there was soil, but there was a whole load of other things as well. There was a whole load of big, powerful weeds that no one had taken out. And so the weeds were stronger and more powerful than the little seedlings, and the little seedlings got overwhelmed by the weeds, and there was no harvest there either. But then there was some good soil. Thank goodness for the good soil. And the seed came and it fell into that soil and there was an amazing harvest for the farmer. And then Jesus does something that he doesn't often do. Um, the Bible says that at that point when he'd finished telling this story, he cries out. It says he lifts up his voice and he says what your teachers at school might sometimes say. He said, if you've got ears, he says, hear what I'm saying to you. Uh, the Message Bible says, are you listening? Are you really listening? And the disciples knew then that Jesus had told a story that was incredibly important, but they didn't understand what he meant. And he said to them afterwards, if you don't understand this story, you're not going to understand the rest of what I'm saying. And so they said to him, you have to tell us, Jesus, what does this story mean? 
And he said, the very first thing he said to them was this, the seed in the story is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Now we know that there's hidden power, this secret latent power inside the Bible. And he's talking about the Bible here. But he's also talking about the word of God being the message from God, which was the message of this gospel, which is the message that people are discussing um, in the in the Alpha courses. And they've been doing this on Wednesday nights, talking about this message from God that Jesus has come and has died for our sins and has risen again to make us right with God. And it's also the word of God can be seen as being Jesus because the Bible says that he was the message from God and that the word was with him in the beginning and the word was God and that was Jesus. So this seed when he talks about it as well as meaning the Bible is all these other things, it is spiritual things and I've got a little seed that I found this morning. There's seeds, do you know, in your kitchen, in the in tomatoes and apples, and there's seeds all around us. And I've got a seed here, which I'm going to show you. Um, and it's a seed from an apple that I ate today. Um, and it's just an apple seed. Now, that tiny, tiny seed, incredibly, it's so tiny that I had to put it on a piece of paper. That little seed has the power one day, if it's planted in soil, to become a whole big apple tree full of apples and um, full of flowers and the insects will go there and the birds might nest there. It could become a huge tall tall tree as big as a house even maybe just from this tiny tiny little seed. And the Bible says that these seeds that we have on earth are just a little reflection of the incredible power that there is in the Bible, in the words that God has spoken. And Jesus said to them that this farmer went out to sow his seed and as he was scattering it, some fell on the path and it was trampled on and the birds ate it up. And this is the first kind of soil and this is the this is a picture of our hearts when they become hard or parts of our heart might be hard. The path is a picture of that. Um, and the, how, how do our hearts become hard? The Bible teaches us that our hearts get hard through sin. It's when we gather up bad attitudes, when we're angry, maybe angry with mum and dad, maybe angry with brothers and sisters. We might be angry about something that somebody said to us. And as adults, it could be something that somebody said to us years ago. Um, jealousy, bitterness, judgments against other people, all these things, if we hold on to them, can make our heart hard. And Jesus, it said, was amazed at the hardness of heart of the people and of particularly of the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were these ones who thought they were better than other people, that, that they thought they could, they, basically they could see other people's sins but they couldn't see our own their own sins and sometimes we are like that we can see what's wrong with other people but we don't see what's wrong in our own hearts and George Muller as God had touched his heart and worked in his heart he turned his heart from being a hard heart uh, a, a person who didn't care about other people into somebody who had good soil in their heart not just a burning heart but a heart with good soil so i thought we could make this our prayer and it's my prayer through july uh, that we would pray oh god would you make my heart good soil and i want to challenge flame and also tribe to learn these four types of soil um, because th this matters if we want to see a harvest for jesus um, we, we're going to have to have some good soil there's no harvest without good soil. Uh, so let's just pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you uh, that your word is powerful, that it has hidden power in it, like that little apple seed. And we want to pray, Lord, over July, over this time, would you make our hearts good soil? And where they're hard and where we have these wrong attitudes, would you come and would you change our hearts? Even this week, would you change our hearts, Lord? Amen. Oh,